In this video, I'm going to go over test 4. Test 4, I gave you 18 problems. I divided the test in two parts, static electricity and electric current. Static electricity, I divided in two parts, charged by induction and charged by conduction. Charged by induction, I gave you four problem and charged by conduction, I gave you three problem and electric current, I gave you 11 problem. So, in this video, I'm going to go over all 18 problems. Let's start our conversation with problem number one, in which I ask you to show your understanding that you understand the charge by induction, charge with your touching. I gave you an electroscope, scope, and, and this is knob, and this is lips. All right, so now I told you that you being a charged rod close to the electroscope without touching and that is a positively charged rod. So, what happened to the charge in the electroscope? All right, so all the negative were going to rush to the knob. All the negative going to rush to the knob. What happened if you remove if you remove the charged rod? If you remove the charged rod, you just remove you remove the charged rod. So what happened? So how can you explain this? The electrons are gonna move to the knob, okay? and electrons gonna return to the lips after you removing the rod of course. Now problem two I gave you exactly same problem but instead of positive rod what if you being a negative rod close to the electroscope. Negative 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 what happened? Alright what happened is that all the negative gonna rush to the lips why? Because negative negative repel all the negative gonna rush to the lips, negative negative repel and all the positive gonna be very close to the negative because the negative positive attract, never forget that. So that was question number two. Question number three, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go back to a problem similar to question number one of course. So we're gonna do the positive, positive rod again. So that was question number two. Now I'm gonna go back to question number three, I being a positively charged rod, okay, I have a neutral electroscope, I, uh, I being a positively, positively charged rod, very close to electroscope without touching it, what happened? What happened with the charges in the knob, all right, in the knob the charges will be negative, okay and uh, on the lips the charges will be positive. What happened when a positively charged rod you bring it close to an electroscope? So induced charge distribution, induced charge distribution means charge by induction meaning charge without touching. So if you have a positive rod close to the electroscope what happened? This is going to be the negative, this is going to be the positive. When a positively charged body, okay, a positively charged body touches a neutral body, all right. So when a positively charged object touches a neutral body, what happens? Let's see. Um, touches. So neutral body will lose electrons. Neutral body will lose electrons. By conduction, charged by conduction meaning charged by touch. Okay. All right. Now let's do problem number six. Scenario: I have four electroscope. I want to know which one is charged by conduction. So number one is not charged by conduction because there is no touching. Number two is not charged by conduction because no touching. Number C charged by there is a touch but positive supposed to attract negative. Okay? 
Uh, so this is wrong. The positive, positive repel, and the problem number seven. I have two object, far, and PVC pipe. PVC pipe gain one hundred electrons. That means the far animal far lost 100 electrons. So in this gain lost lost 100 electrons. This is a parallel circuit circuit. In parallel circuit, what we I know that the voltage is equal to V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3 is equal to V4. That means the voltage is 12 volt over here, 12 volt over here, 12 volt over here, 12 volt over here. So now VIR tells us the current voltage over resistance. So the current right here is um, ball number 1 is voltage over resistance. The voltage is 12 and resistance is 6. So the current is 2 amps. So, the current over here is 2 amps, 2 amps. Do problem 9. So, problem 9 has 4 choice. So, number 1, uh, let us say 12 voltage, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, all right, 2 ohms, 2 ohms, 4 ohms, which is similar to this one, 12 voltage, 2, 2, 6 and D 12 2 2 6 plus R 3 and that would be 2 to 4 uh, 8 uh, 8 all right and this one um, Ohm's law tells us R is equal to R 1 plus R 2 plus R 3 so for 10, so this one is 10. So this one is the largest and these are the parallel. These are the parallel, the parallel is really very small, very small. This is also parallel. You don't even have to test it because parallel is gonna be very small, very small, very small. All right, so you don't have to test it. So uh, the largest one, largest resistance is of course C. Problem number 10, R3, how can I find it? Well, that would not be so difficult because I have the current. So this is a series circuit. This is a series circuit, so the current must be the same. So the current is 2, the current is 2, and the current is 2. All right, so that means VIR with a voltage, voltage over here should be 8. Voltage is 8 because voltage is current times resistance, so 8. So the voltage is 12. Okay, so how much the voltage over here? So this is a series circuit. Series circuit voltage is V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So, total voltage is 24, V1 is 8, V2 is 12 plus V3. So, 24 minus 20 is equal to V3. So, the voltage has to be 4 over here, right? Voltage has to be 4. So, if the voltage is 4, the resistance is voltage over current. So, voltage is 4, current is 2, 4 over 2 is 2. So, this one is 2. All right, so the resistance is 2. This problem, let's say the current is 8 amps over here. 8 amps current flow through this series circuit. So I want to know the equivalence resistance. So the resistance would be R1 plus R2 because this is series. So R is equal to R1 is 1 ohms plus 2 ohms. So R is equal to 3 ohms. This problem, I have 4 circuit. Which one has the smallest? resistance okay let's find the resistance over here the resistance is 1 over r is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 so 1 over r is equal to 2 over 2 all right so 2r 
is equal to 2. So R is equal to 1 ohms. This is parallel. This is series. So R is equal to 4 ohms. This is parallel. So this is R is equal to, of course, 4 times 2, 8 ohms. This is, uh, this is series. 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 Parallel. This is, of course, parallel. So 1 over R is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So 1 over R is equal to 2 and then the 4. So you have 1 over R is equal to um, 4 over 2. So, um, so 4 over 2. So 4 R is equal to 2. So R is equal to 0.5. So this one is 0.5 this one is 0.5, this one is 8, this one is 4, and this one is 1. So of course this one is the smallest because this is 0.5 plus equivalent resistance. So this is series, so this is 4, uh, 4 ohms and this is the parallel. So this is 1. Uh, why this is 1? Because uh, again 1 over r is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So 1 over r is equal to 2 over 2. So 2R is equal to 2, so R is equal to 1. So this is 1 ohms. So 4 ohms, 1 ohms, this is 1 over R is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1, right? 1 over R is equal to 2, right? 2 over 1. So then 2R is equal to, 2R is equal to 1. So R is equal to 1 over 2. So this is 0 0.5. And this is 2. So this is C is the smallest. If I have a voltmeter to read the voltage, so this is the voltmeter V1 and this is V2. So the V1 will read V1 will read uh, six voltage, all right, right here, and V2 also reads six voltage. Why is that? Because this is a parallel circuit. In the parallel circuit, this is voltage is same across the circuit. This is problem number 15, and let's say the current over here is 10 amps. I want to find current right here. So let's see if the current is 4 amps over here, so I can use that for our advantage. So VIR tells us the voltage over here. So, the current times the resistance is the voltage. So, 120 is the voltage over here. Okay, so far so good. Now, I have the current uh, right here. I need to know the current right here. Since this is a parallel circuit, I know the voltage would be the same across the circuit. So, the voltage is 1. 20. Of course, now I have the voltage, I have the resistance, so I should be able to find the current. Current is voltage divided by resistance, so 120 divided by 20, so 0, and this is 6. So, of course, this is according to the math, this is 6 amps. So, A1, in fact, is 6 amps. We're going to call it bulb number one, bulb number two, bulb number three. Only bulb number one has an electric current because the electron can move from, well, because the current, not electron, because the current can, because, because the charges, because the charges can move from positive terminal to the negative terminal through this lamp. Therefore, this one has current. This one does not have current because the charges cannot move. Elect uh, the current cannot flow. This one, the switch is open, so current cannot flow. So the bulb one is gonna have current. In which circuit the current flows through R1, but not the R2? So is the current flow through the R1 here? No, is because as I said that the current can, the charges can flow up from here to here to here to here to here, but it cannot flow right here because there is the switch is open, so this is no good. 
All right, now let's check over here. Can current flow through R1? Of course not. The current can go, go, go. This is the bulb, okay? It want to complete the fourth, but no, this switch is open. So, can current flow through the R1? It seems like current can flow through the R1, all right? R1, R1, but no, it cannot complete the cycle. If it doesn't complete the cycle, then there is no current at R1. Let's see, there is a current at R1. Yes, because the current can start over here. Current can start over here over here and it can flow right over here and there is no open switch and the current complete the path. Trying to find the reading at voltmeter, this voltmeter, we want to find the reading right here. Okay, so let's do it. So the voltmeter V2, uh, we have the resistance, we have the voltage, so we can find the current over here. So, V I R. So, the current is V over R. So, 80 divided by 20. So, 0, 0 cancel, 2 goes to 4 or 8, 4 times. So, the current is 4 amps over here. Good. So, the current is 4 amps over here. Now, since this is a series circuit, currents also 4 amps over here. Now, what we are trying to find? Voltage. Voltage is Ohm's law tells us current times resistance. So, the current is 4 and resistance is 40. So, the voltage must be 160 volt over here. So, A is the correct answer.